Hello everyone, this is Luboš Pirkl from CFD Support. I'd like to welcome you to the webinar where we're about to show you a comprehensive simulation workflow of a centrifugal pump in TCAE, which is a simulation environment with substantial value at very reasonable costs. I hope everything is working well. We are running live, so in case of any technical problems, feel free to contact us and we will gladly answer all your questions and comments. The webinar is being recorded and the recording will be later made publicly available. So, yeah, we have a lot of shiny new stuff to show. So make yourself comfortable. Please do follow, follow carefully and think about what what it is that you need, what it is that you would like to get improved in your simulations and, and tell us. At the end of the webinar, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and comments. And uh, yeah, feel free to, to ask your questions anytime during the webinar and we will do our best to answer them during the webinar. Or feel free to send us an email later and we'll be happy to, to help and answer and get in touch and yeah i think it, this this is for the, for the interaction and let's get into it so please let me quickly introduce the webinar speakers there will be our usual suspects so this is me my name is Lubos Perkel and my current job at CV support is telling the world about us and right next door is sitting my colleague Radek Matsa who is our head engineer and senior developer and let's ask him if he can hear us so hello 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 radek can you hear us hello hello lubosh and hello to everyone who is watching right now hello hello and hello <laughs> okay thanks yeah great so how how are you radek are you how are you doing in these crazy pandemic times yeah i'm fine actually after one month i am at the office right yeah and because of the sunny sunny weather outside i came by I came by motorcycle, which which I love. So, pretty nice day today. <laughs> right, right. We can't wait the you know this the normal the, the new normal the new normal which comes whatever it is. Right, we can't yes. wait for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you yes. have you have you improved in uh, in homeschooling so so far? Uh, not not much because my son is at the kindergarten. Okay. He, he, okay. he ignores you're all the home homework. So, <laughs> okay, you're, you're you're so lucky. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. yesterday yeah. He, let's, let's... he was three years old, so we celebrated okay. it. And... Okay. That's all. Okay. Let's <laughs> speak about this later. I have yeah, funny yeah, stories sure. about this. But anyway, let's 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 go ahead in in this in this webinar. Um, yeah. So here's the again the agenda of the webinar. Uh, as usual, in the first part, there will be a general introduction, where I'll I'll do my best to quickly not to torture you too much to quickly introduce uh, what's what has been done and what's on the table. In the second part, uh, Radek will give a live presentation of uh, TCAE step by step simulation of a centrifugal pump. Uh, and finally, in the in the last part, there will be a Q&A session dedicated to your questions and our answers. And uh, we're we are looking forward to it. So feel free to ask your questions anytime during the webinar. Some questions will be answered uh, right away uh, in the webinar. Uh, the rest will be answered later via email, but you can be sure that all the relevant questions <laughs> will be answered. Uh, uh, yeah. And this is this is uh, yeah this is very important part for us. So feel free to give us give us your feedback. Uh, uh, just very quickly, what 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 only 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 this uh, only so much that that has to be said. So our company name is CFD Support. It was founded in 2009. We are located in Prague, Czech Republic, uh, and uh, at CFD Support we deal with uh, numerical simulations and engineering simulations. So we primarily focus on the development of uh, CAE software with very high edit value for its users. It's definitely a high-end software. And our clients are CAE professionals who know well what they want. We are obsessed with accuracy. The accuracy is of our highest priority. 
And besides accuracy, we are focused on automation, repeatability, and application tailored solutions like software. We don't believe in general purpose code. We don't believe uh, that any particular so software can accurately simulate everything or that anyone can simulate everything. We do believe that any successful project is a result of focus, skills, experience, patience, and dedication. We believe in open source, especially we believe in a combination of open source and professional support. So, so far we have invested more than 30 many years of focused team development on top of open sources uh, to deliver uh, this professional simulation tools. And we would like to show them a little bit of it today. Uh, we have a strong development team. And as a result, we have we maintain uh, uh, this, which is which is TCAE. Uh, it's uh, it's a simulation software where where we merged the, the benefits of open source with the benefits of commercial code. So due to the open source, it's unlimited. It's extremely flexible, and due to the commercial code, it's uh, it has graphical interface, it has professional technical support, it's robust, it's accurate, it's automated, it's well tested and maintained, and it's it's ready for, for use in the industry. So this is this is how the graphical interface looks like. The user can do here pretty pretty everything, or yeah, sure, everything for for the from the simulation setup uh, and the simulation run, run to the detailed post processing of the results and of course besides this graphical interface uh, the, the batch mode is available and uh, tca can be run uh, inside another software and, and it's, it's pretty comprehensive uh, for these reasons uh, uh, yeah tca uh, it actually consists uh, of software modules that can be combined according to the to the project needs. Uh, as already mentioned uh, a couple of times, TCA has this module character, and the user can choose between or among uh, TCA modules, and uh, if needed, uh, he can combine them or he or she can combine them uh, with many other software pieces available in the market and the total number of combinations is almost infinite. TCAE has a strong integration ability, it has strong uh, interfaces, and it has been from the beginning developed in a way to fit existing workflows, no matter if it is combined with commercial codes, in-house codes, or with another open source code. Uh, it has strong interfaces and it's very flexible, in, it's very flexible, as, as you know, in any enterprise, the engineers usually have some existing um, workflow already. So TCA is capable to, it's capable of uh, fitting into it, no matter what design tool is used, no matter what uh, uh, CAT software is used, uh, no matter what uh, meshing system is used, TCA is still here to, to do its job to fit the workflow, do its job, and deliver the results for the for the user's judgment. So it's very flexible. And uh, yeah, there are a couple of other capabilities. I'll be reasonably quick here. So as I guess you know it, TCA is, is unlimited. So there are no limitations on number of its users. There are no limitations of, of jobs and cores and hardware, hardware installations. Uh, so the, you can be sure that the users can use it, use their resources uh, to the fullest. Uh, TCA is accurate. We are very, very keen on accuracy. Uh, it's it's aimed on particular applications. That's the reason why it can be accurate because it's it, it's not doing everything. It's, it's focused on especially on turbo machinery simulations and external aerodynamics. And it's definitely not a general purpose code for everything. We are obsessed with accuracy and uh, we believe that we, we have gathered a pretty unique know-how, which we are, of course, de delivering with the software. And there are a lot of benchmarks to prove it's, it's it. Uh, 
yeah, DCA is, is automated. Automation is a big thing. Uh, and another big priority here at CFD support, it's the automation is, is extremely effective. The user can decide whether it's, it's going to be used as a black box, just with just putting the data in and pulling the data out of it, or as a highly sophisticated uh, simulation uh, environment with, with, with all, the, all the details available. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, we have uh, reasonably, I think, actually, we are proud of our, of our technical support. It's, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I'll continue with, with uh, the, the software is developed for uh, Windows and Linux, uh, both native compilations, uh, you can, it can be used uh, remotely and in the or in the batch mode or completely in in the in the graphical interface it's the user's decision the same with the meshing the the, the automated meshing system is available and of course the users can can load the external meshes that's it's re definitely ready for that there's extensive post processing uh, there, are, there are extensive post processing features especially for turbo machinery we we've, we've we've walked a, a long path to to deliver everything what's what's necessary for professional turbo machinery post processing uh, the the development it's it's always on the way right no no software is ever finished so it's all the way uh, or all the time uh, being developed uh, every day a, a lot of new code lines are are added and tested and in the process uh, I think I can say uh, right now that, that there are two new software modules on the way. It's, it will be a module for aeroacoustics, and definitely we, are, we, are have, we have uh, very, very much uh, developed this, uh, this, this module for the optimization, so you can look forward to it uh, in, the, in the next major release. And uh, yeah. So we have recently released a um, new version. I'm not going to comment it too much. This this webinar is not should not be uh, about about the general information. We would like to show you things. So I'll be very very quick here. Uh, DCA has a lot of applications. You can find them on our website. There are also quite uh, some uh, benchmarks we did in the past where we can show in the in the public presentations we have been permitted from our, our clients typically, where we can show, uh, we can show the comparisons typically with measurements. So uh, yeah, I think, well, yeah, this <laughs> was pretty quick, but I'm sure that you were looking forward to, to the real contribution of this, uh, of this webinar, which is, which is this centrifugal pump uh, experience uh, where, where you can see how it is set from the beginning, step by step, and uh, get all the all the all the all the all the impressions and everything. So at this point, I'll try to hand over the presentation over to Radek. So Radek, do you think you can take it, or I will, yes, I will switch yes, I over can. to you? Okay, so I'm switching. Can you make me a presenter? Okay. So yes. Now yes. Yes. I yes. I'm doing it. Clicking, show my screen. So just tell me if you see see my screen. I think it's coming. Yes, it's there. So go ahead. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lubosh. So hello again. So in in this part, I I will show you a centrifugal pump example. So I will try to set up the whole simulation from scratch. So I will only take an existing geometry, and I will do all the basic steps which are necessary to run a successful simulation in DCA. So today we, we will do the centrifugal pump. You can find it on, on our web pages. So you can download this example and try on your own with a trial version or, or you can ask, yeah, you can ask for the trial version and try on your own how it works. So today I will be basically speaking about, about this geometry. So, as an input, I will I will take the STL STL surface, so surface bed surface of the, of this pump design, and each surface defines each part of the of the geometry. So whenever you are exporting the CAD geometry for the for the TCA purposes, 
to be meshed in the TCAE, you need to export the SDLs with with the separate parts, meaningful and physical parts, to be to create each let's say each component or the or the whole geometry. Maybe I will just quickly say about about the main main things, main workflow of creating the mesh in in TCE or particularly in the T mesh module. So at the beginning, basically, what what you what you have is the CAD geometry which has to be cleaned. So let me find a proper proper slide, which is I think like having here. So so from and let's say a real shape geometry of of your machine of your design you need to export just the wet surface which would define the the domain to be to be solved for the for the fluid properties and whenever you have one let's say one part of 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 the wet surface you need to split it into the meaningful part First, the first level of splitting is to split into the component. So TMesh and TCFD in general use so-called component thinking. So splitting, splitting the domain into the meaningful part. Basically, the splitting is based on what is rotation, rotational part and what is stationary or non-rotational part. Then for the rotational part, the rotation is prescribed either by MRF method in steady state steady state approach or or real solid body motion for transient simulations so this basic is this ba or this basic splitting has to be taken into account when you are exporting the cat data and creating the stls and then the second splitting is for each component because each stl is used for definition of each boundary so as you know you need to define what is the inlet what is the outlet what are the rotating parts, non-rotating parts. And for example, you can do also the splitting for the meshing purposes. So for example, you can export leading and trailing edges separately because you need to have fi much finer mesh on these parts than, for example, on suction and, and pressure side. And this, let's say, high level splitting will help you to define a nice nice and proper proper mesh. So basically, you you can split each component or you need to or sometimes you have to split uh, the component into more parts because then each part will define one boundary on which you can prescribe particular particular boundary condition or the physical type if it's inlet or if it's wall or if it's in general patch for some some rotational or translational symmetry or something like that. So this you need to take into account when you are exporting the CAD data for for CFD simulation in TCE. So this basically splitting is was already done, and I will be I will be working with the STLs, which is put in one directory, and all these STLs describe the whole the whole geometry, including this components and and the boundaries so maybe i will directly start so to start working with tcae i will just click the icon of the tcae 21.02 so uh, i am using the latest v2 update which was released a few days ago so i am working with the really with the latest version of tcae so as you can see in TCAE, there are several modules to be used. There is one module called TMesh for the meshing or for loading the external meshes, then TCFD module for CFD simulations and FEA module for, for FEA sim simulation, basically for, for the stress analysis, frequency analysis, and also FSI can be, can be applied. So one way FSI from CFD results, the forces can be mapped to the to the finite element mesh and use for the finite element analysis so because i'm starting really from scratch so first i need to create the t mesh without mesh we can we can't have, we can't have the results so for now i will disable these modules T tcfd and T tfea and i will i will be playing with the with the mesh for the very for the very beginning 
Okay, so first of all, I will save save my configuration file because all what I I will fill here and all, all the setting all the settings I would like to store somewhere. So I will create I will create a configuration file within my directory where, for example, my STL directory lies. So which is I think here in webinars, and I have created here directory webinar centrifugal pump from scratch, which includes only the directory with input STLs. So I will call it, for example, webinar setup. Okay, so now I will go to the tmesh module and we will be creating the mesh. So first menu is just general general menu in which I can define the mesh output. So for, for which purposes I'm creating this mesh. Now I'm creating for CFD mesh, but then I will, for example, also add the finite element mesh for finite element analysis. But let's start with the CFD mesh. Then scale factor tells me the source quantity or source dimensions of the of the, of the STLs. So some cat exports, or you can export this as STLs in millimeters, in meters, or for example, in inches. So you need to tell what is the source, what are what is the source dimension of your STLs. In my case, it's already in meters, so I keep this default setup. Well, then, then in CFD mesh, the main the main play is is happening in the components where we where we set all the components and boundaries. In the rotation reference frame, we will then define the the, the rotation or the axis of the rotation, mainly for the rotating component and the static component. So we need to always have two components, static and rotating, and then this reference frame will be then assigned to to the given component if it's if the component is whole rotating or it's not rotating. So let's start with the first component. So in in our case, we have we have we have four components which is depicted here. So we have an inlet pipe, then we have a impeller pipe, then we have a volute volute part including the leakages and then we have also the extension extension part piping part which is usually clever to 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 do because of the stability of CFD simulations CFD simulations laugh laugh long outlet where the flow can be can become much more steady than than simply CFD doesn't like recirculations area at the outlet, so it's always better to do this extension at the outlet. Okay, so component one, it will be, for example, this inlet pipe. So I will call it inlet pipe, this component. This component is stationary and the mesh input type is directory with STL files. For those who, who has or who have who has uh, their their own own mesh tools like this grid pro or um, any other which was mentioned you can export it into several formats for example into msh format in the fluent mesh format in the open foam mesh format or cgns mesh format and after the, you export it into this format then you can directly load the the resulting mesh here in the component section so now we are working with the STL. So I will I will find find the directory with the STLs. So I need to go to the D drive uh, webinars this from scratch directory and STL. Okay, when in this directory, uh, it automatically loads all the STLs which fill this table, and now we can assign particular type to each to each part of the boundary to each part of the STL and define define the, the first component. So the first component is the inlet tube. Okay, I have STLs which are properly named, so it will be an easy job. So inlet, physical inlet, 
we have yeah, we have here several patch types. Basically, they are they are named to be very very straightforward. So physical inlet and outlets are are denoted as inlet and outlet. Then we have several wall types like plate, suction site, and pressure site. So we can identify particular parts of the turbo machinery turbo machinery machines. Then there are some some types for the for 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 the for several symmetry type like rotation type for the segment simulation, for example, or translational type for some symmetries or or any other uh, proper proper applications, internal AMI for some internal internal connect connection of two 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 parts two interfaces within one component. So here we have the physical type inlet. Then inlet tube wall I can denote simply as a wall, and the outlet I have here several interfaces which define the connection between two neighboring components, and the correct one for this particular component is this interface inlet tube to volute. So let me denote it as not not as an outlet because it's not a physical outlet out of the domain, but it's the connection and it, it is the outlet. So there are two types, inlet and outlet interfaces. So this one will be the outlet interface. So now I can click apply and after clicking apply these parts are automatically loaded. So now, now I see that my that, that my uh, axis of rotation is set in the wrong way. So I can go back to the rotational reference frames and set a proper proper axis of rotation. So it, it's it's set in place in the origin. And similarly, I can do it for static. This is important mainly for the segment simulation because then you you need to know if you are simulating just a segment of, for example, axial pump, you need to know the transformation yeah, to, to, to map correctly this periodicities, for example. So you need to define it also for the static static reference frames. So now it is correct. So I can close the menu, which will also uh, hide, hide the, the axis. I don't need to see it at the moment. And yeah, here, here basically I have set up the first component. So first I will, I will create the boundaries and then I will go back to each component and define define proper refinement and other or other other parameters which are connected to the to the meshing itself. So let's add the component two. The component two could be for example the impeller. So let me define the impeller now. The impeller will be rotating so I will set directly the reference frame as rotating and I will load the same directory. And now I need to define the, the, the parts of the impeller. So impeller blades. So let me set this, for example, blade. And whenever I will I will enable one, one part of it or any part, I can click apply. And then this part is visualized in the render view. What is nice, if you denote this CFD geometry, which, which holds the data, yeah, you can hide it and unhide it anytime. And here is so component colors, which then each color define you define you a, a, a particular component. And what is also useful to add some visibility visibility to see what is inside. So this is a nice, let's say, render view at this point, and we can continue. So then we have impeller blade fillets, which are the parts connecting the hub and shroud. So let me set it as, okay, for example, hub fillets. It doesn't matter, it's just for the better better, better connection or connecting or to, to better distinguish between different types at the end. So basically all the types are simple walls. So it doesn't matter if you set this as a, as a wall or as a blade hub fillet. But then it's you can better distinguish these parts if the name is not appropriate. It if the STL doesn't have a appropriate name, for example. 
Okay, then we have impeller impeller hub. So let me. So this this these are the blades. Okay, inner hub. So I can set it as a hub, similar for shroud. Now we can see, okay, hub and shroud were edit. Then we have the impeller inlet. So this will be the inlet interface. And, okay. Then we have impeller, okay. Okay, maybe I'm not sure if this is the proper proper part because we have these interfaces. So I'm not sure now. So for example, I can make a slice to to really see the meridional contour of what I have already set. Okay, so this is the inlet, which is okay. And I think we are missing the outlet at the moment. So I need to find the STL of the outlet, which is the, I think, interface impeller to volute. So I can set it as outlet interface. So let's apply it. Okay, and now we can see a nice close contour of, of, the, of the rotor part, which is good. I think we have two, two same STLs. Let me, let me check it because impeller inlet, if I, if I get rid of it, and we have here also the interface volute to impeller, I guess is the proper, proper part. Okay, and yeah, yes, yes. So we have just basically here in two, two same STLs for the same part. So it doesn't matter which, which one we, we use. It's simply the question of the preparation of the, of the STL geometry. Okay, so this is the component two. So let's quickly add the component three, which will be the volute, for example, name of the component, again, the directory with STLs, and let's define the volute part. So, so we, let's start with the volute spiral. So I can define it simply as a, as a, as a wall, which is here. Let me check what we have added. Yeah, perfectly. So this is the, this is the volute part. Then here we have volute extension. Okay, volute extension is the last part. So it's not this volute shroud with leakage. So I can define it as shroud, which I think will be the part near the leakage. Then we have, what we have here is the, is the out, outside or outward part of the, of the impeller, of the, of the, of the solid. So I think it's defined as, as a outer hub. Yeah. So let's denote it as hub, shroud, outer shroud. Let me check what we have there. I think, I hope you see the contours properly. If not, you can anytime on this slice and in the display, you can make the, the contour thicker. So now we can see that some part here is missing. So we need to properly set additional part. So I think it will be impeller shroud wall, which was, I think, some part here. Yes, yes. So this last thing, then we need to add also this part, which is in this case, uh, something like hub wall. Yeah. So let's denote it as a hub. And finally, the inlet and outlet is missing. So one interface, so impeller to volute, which is this part. And this is the inlet into the volute. Then because the volute is defined in this way, this this part belongs to volute. So the flow goes here from the volute back to the impeller from this leakage part. So we define this um, volute to impeller as outlet interface. And the last one is the interface to the, to the, to the extension. So this is this part and this will be outlet, outlet interface. Okay. All right, so this part was now defined. 
So it seems that the contour is closed, all, all parts is properly defined. Otherwise the mesh will be will be not generated properly if if the contour is not closed or if the domain is not closed. And the last part to define is the component four, let's say extension. Define the same directory and the extension I think it will be quick. So interface volute to volute extension is the inlet interface at the moment. Volute extension outlet is finally the physical outlet and wall we can define as a wall. So let's apply everything and check check the domain. So it seems that we have defined physical physical boundaries properly. And now we need to go back to all the parts and define the parameters of the of the meshing. So as you know, the the solver or the tool for mesh generation is, is called SnappyX mesh. And it works on the principle that you you start with so-called background mesh. So if I here denote the maximum background mesh size, let's say one centimeter. Okay, and you show the background mesh size. So basically it starts from this, from this topology. And then you can say how many times you would like to have the mesh finer at each boundary. And the, the meshing tool basically splits the cells by some rules like, like the level of refinement. And then it will keep just the part inside or outside depending on which part you would like to keep for internal flow or always the, the inner part. And this inner part is then defined by this internal point. So we can visualize this point and put it put it into the into the center of, of the given component or basically inside the given component. So and in this way we define that we would like to keep the, the inner part. So for those who are not so familiar with the with the with the SnappyX mesh, so I will quickly say the principle. So at the beginning we basically tell what is the maximum cell size in the in the mesh, and then based on the boundaries, we will define the splitting. So basically, we always split by factor two. So we split the initial hexahedra into the or initial hexahedron into the given level. So level one builds eight new hexahedras from previous one. Level two, another another eight from each eight. So by factor two, is always refined the mesh. Okay, so what is the proper way of the background mesh size? So let's say we, we can always focus on the on the on the blade part. And if you for example take the impeller diameter, which we can which we can do in this way, if I don't see the geometry here in the information and I will click on the impeller. So here you will see the dimensions. So this impeller has let's say 30, 30 centimeters in diameter. And we usually for the first guess, for the first, let's say, medium size, medium size cell or, or mesh, we we use something like to have 50 to 100 cells in one direction. So if, for example, my 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 wheel has 30 centimeters, and I I will use the factor 50, let's say, so it's divided by 50. I will go to something like let's say half uh, half or five five millimeters right if the factor will be 60 so this this could be a good good start for the for the meshing it's always better to start with the with the rough rougher meshing because it's generated quicker you can tune the proper level of refinement and you can go for the finer meshing if you need so let's start, let's say with, with five, five millimeters. So you can, you can nicely visualize how it, how it is. So I think it's fine enough for our purposes. 
and again you need to put the internal point this is the sphere with radius just for the visualization purpose purposes to see to see the the point which must be placed inside each component so let me put it somewhere inside sometimes you can accidentally put it into the middle of inside the blade which will then leads to a fail of the machine yeah so it must be really in the fluid domain okay similarly we can do the other components so the so the volute is also important part so i will keep the same refinement as for the impeller so the five millimeters you can see yeah, it will be maybe too fine but let's keep it in this way and put the internal internal point into the volute volume so let's keep it in this way yes i think i'm i'm there and the last thing okay some yes, time to time it is good to save the current setup okay, if something that happened so you you always keep the keep the current current setup so let's go for the component 4 and for example for the component 4 it's just the extension it's not an important part for my simulation so i can <clears throat> make the mesh coarser so let's use not 5 millimeters but i will use 10 millimeters for the for the external part for the extension and let me put the point inside okay so yeah we are there okay and when i come back to the component one uh, i've i already knew that i will set five millimeters so i also set <laughs> one centimeter for the inlet pipe because it's also some extension so i don't need to have very fine mesh in this in this component so this was this was the setup of of the basic mesh of the of the largest meshes in the in the of the largest cell in the mesh now we we need to refine each part so let's start with the with the component one <clears throat> so i will be pretty quick so usually when and the part is not so important for you and it's not so complicated so then then lower level of refinement which means coarser mesh can be applied if the if the given part is more very important like blades leading edges and so then you need to impose higher level of refinement so let's start with the with the wall so i will set the wall to the level of one if you set the same level which is minimum and maximum level of refinement then you will have a homo homogeneous refinement on on each part if you set something like this then the high level of refinement is applied for for the highly curved parts so i will keep it in this way because yeah, it's just a cylinder so i need to keep the level one then on the interfaces if you high level of refinement on interfaces will ensure you more accurate interpolation and on those interfaces which are connected so it's always better to also refine the refine the interfaces so let's let's keep it let's keep it in this way you can anytime when any part is connect, is ready and everything is preset properly then you can you can start meshing each part separately so maybe maybe i can i can show you but before i can do that if i, I think if i click the check setup it will tell me that i am the interfaces are not connected so you need to you need to tell to each interface what, what is his neighbor so so let's go for it and to check this connection you can open the component map if you double click it you can undock it the whole the whole let's say window and at the end you need to see this graph that this is connected by the solid solid arrows so at this moment all the components are disconnected so i need to connect them by 
by right click on each interface type. So let's first click on this outlet interface type. Then you need to tell which to which component it has to be connected. So in this setup, I need to connect it to the volute. And the volute, the proper interface is basically of the same name. So interface uh, inlet tube to volute. And if you can see, I I forgot to set this component part to this patch part in the component. So let's go back here. And interface inlet tube to volute is also the interface of the volute. So let me denote it as yeah, yes, inlet interface. So this is I forgot. So back to the component one. And now I can connect it to the volute, to the uh, inlet tube to volute part. And now we can see that the inlet pipe part is I properly connected to the volute. So now the same for the impeller part. So impeller, let's say inlet interface has to be connected to the volute, interface volute to impeller, and so interface volute to impeller, and outlet impeller to volute has to be again connected to volute, and interface impeller to volute part. So this is this. Right. So now we have this connection to the to the volute. Then the volute is back connected to the to the impeller, and impeller is again back connected to the volute because it's inner part of the volute, the impeller component, as we can see from the from these images or from this topology. Yeah, the, because the the impeller part is basically inside or inside the com component volute. <clears throat> okay, and the last thing to check uh, is my window here is the extension is missing. So let's go back to the extension or to the volute and the uh, outlet interface to volute extension has to be connected to the extension, this one. And now we have all the solid lines, so it's like a muzzle for for kids, you need to go from the <laughs> from the first component to the last component by going only through the solid solid arrows, right? So we're going here, then we are going back to volute and from the volute to the last extension. So now topo it's topologically correctly correctly connected. So let me try to check if everything is connected well. Yeah, now case setup is okay. So you can try to run to to simulate or generate the mesh for the inlet pipe component. It will be quick, so I will show you. And before I do that, I can set more, more processors to be used. I have, let's say, eight processors available at this computer. So save. Now we can write a case for the test purposes. Hey, and I can I can run the build build mesh for the component one. Yeah, so if you're really starting with the meshing, so usually the process is iterative. So you set the best proper parameters you you find out from, from your particular geometry, then you test it by physically generating the mesh. So you can visualize it here in the CFD mesh. And if you use, for example, surface with edges, so you can see the topology of, of the mesh. So I'm, I'm I'm okay with it. And then we can go for for setting up the next component mesh or particular mesh parameters. So I, I will try to be much quicker. So let me let me set here. So here the refinement is the background mesh is twice finer than for the inlet tube, uh, inlet tube part. So let me say for, for blade hub fillets, let's say I will set a level of refinement three. So based on your based on your knowledge of the input geometry and the dimensions, you know what is the proper proper size of 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 the cell on each part. For example, I will then 
show you that, for example, to mesh properly this, let's say, this leakage part, you need to find out, like, let's say, the, the lowest value, the lowest diameter, or the lowest gap, which is within, within your leakage. I think here is one millimeter. So then it, you you know that if for, if the if the basic basic cell size is five millimeters and this should be one millimeter to ha have at least one cell there, you need to refine refine it more than four, three times. So three times if you refine them and if you refine this cell three times, then the cell size will be something like zero point twenty. 25 millimeters right which is which is two refinements three refinements will be less than one millimeter something half a millimeter and uh, which is almost not the whole two cells which is still not not enough and if, if you use the level four which if you count it it's something like 0 0.3 millimeters then you have let's say four cells in this part and it will be enough so in this case, you can you can guess the number of refinement or level of refinement based on your particular part of the geometry. Okay, so let's let's continue. So for for blades, let's say I will set the level level two inner hub inner shroud. It's not so complex part. So let's say I have a level one. The Inlet inlet interface I will set it to let's say to one and the outlet interface because it's it's smaller and it, it and some detailed part is attached to it so I will set high level of refinement for example in in this way okay let's go for, to component three which is the volute so here. What we can set. So let's start uh, from the from the top. So impeller impeller half wall. We can we can set it. Let's say to level to level two because it's this this outside part which are which is connected to the to the leakages. So it must be let's say uh, the level of refinement should be should be higher than. Uh, uh, the outer hub, which is which is the the largest part of the larger part of it, so we can set it to one. Similarly for outer shroud, for the shroud wall, it's, it's similar part as a hub wall, so I will set it as two. So interfaces now, so interface impeller to volute, which is the upper part, we have set I think level two in the component. So usually. It is clever to have the same level of ref refinement of the interfaces for for from both sides because then because the interpolation is done so then the interpolation will be equal because the sizing will be so sizing will be equal so there will be not a high disproportion of of the cells from on one side compared to the to the size of the cells on the other side so inlet tube to volute so we have set i think level 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 one from from this part and but the the mesh was coarser so to keep the same sizing there so i can i can set zero at this part volume to impeller is this second interface which we have set i think one level one and interface to volute extension we can keep it also as zero because it's this large area here then we'll shroud with leakage shroud, so we can we can set it to one, which is the which is the shroud part of the of the volute, and the spiral is the is the rest. So I will keep it to to the to the level of refinement of one. Okay, which is good, but as, as we already as I already show, shown you that or, or mentioned. That this leakages, which is here and also at the back side or on the on the hub side of the of the impeller, this leakages has has circa one millimeter. So we need to set the proper level of refinement of on this part. But because this part builds 
is one STL, so we cannot prescribe particular particular level of refinement just to this part. There is a feature which is called use GIP refinement. So you can set this GIP refinement level on on larger STLs, and if it finds some some gap, some close gap between those two parts, it will increase the level of refinement up up to the level which is set in this gap refinement column. So we need to have at least, let's say, two, two or three cells here. And because of our, our background mesh sizing and one millimeter of, of the real distance in this gap, we need to set something like level four. So on this, if you, if you double click, it should be denoted. So this is the, okay, well, volute shroud with leakage part. So we need to, this is the, the part of the volute and the opposite part is I think the outer shroud. Yeah, so it's the opposite part of the of the of the impeller itself. So we will set the level four here and level four here. Shroud with leakage. And similarly we need to we need to we need to do it for to proper mesh this gap. So I think the outer part is the volute volute part. So let's keep four and outer hub. I think is this part, yes. So we need to set four. And then the measure will add the level of refinement just in these gaps to proper to have proper meshing of, of this of these areas. All right, so I hope I think we we have properly set the parameters here, including the gap refinement, and the last part is pretty easy, I think. So inlet interface to be in the same at the same level, I will set level one because on the other side is level zero, but with a finer background mesh. I will set wall to one and outlet does not need to be refined. Right. So when we are finished, I can click save and check if everything is okay and run run the meshing. Of course, this meshing will will take several minutes so I, I can I can open the finished finished mesh with with a similar setup. So I think here are my previous let's say simulations. So I can directly open the configuration file which which holds holds the setup and also the results if the result the results are already simulated which are in this case. Okay, so this is basically what you see at the end. So I will get rid of all results, but I will show you, say, the T mesh. So, for example, I can show the impeller part. After the meshing is done, I will get rid of all the. So this is the mesh just on the on the impeller. I can also add the volute. Okay, again, I can highlight each part by its proper color, Color, which could be which one? This one, maybe. Hmm. And I can make a slice to see what is, what is inside. So I will slice it just in the middle and to see the topology of the mesh. Yes, so surface with edges and for example, I can make a crinkle slice to really physically see the shape of the cells. So you can see that that it proportionally splits or refine refine the leakages. And similarly here, the gap refinement just will add the cells only with the small gaps and not in the large larger gaps. So it follows basically by the level of refinement on the on the walls itself. So this is let's say say mesh which can be applied. Of course we can refine as we as we, as we want but then the complexity uh, will will extremely increase with respect to the simulation time and generation time for the mesh of course. All right, so this this setup is pretty straightforward you need to play a bit you need to get some experience with the meshing but but the rules are that everything has to be meshed properly you need to you need to have everywhere 
uh, proportional cells to or the cell size which is proportional to the importance of each part of the of the geometry and everything everything has to be meshed let's say properly to to be nice to to eye and yeah, no zigzag shapes no no holes in the in the in the resulting geometry and so you can easily add also the for example the boundary layer which is important with respect to the simulation accuracy so we can just easily add the layers by clicking here in the layers column so on the balls for for example i can set three level three three layers three boundary layer or inflation layers and i can make it to to other parts of the geometry and maybe i can quickly show you that if you if you do it you can then you can then see the boundary boundary layer on all those parts for which the boundary layer was was set okay let me quickly show you for example i will just load load the t-mesh and the volute part for example so let me uh what is the sorry sorry here t-mesh Let's say show the volute, and I will make a slide just to see that if you just add this number three into the last column, into the level, into the number of layers column, then you will see. Oh, sorry, where is my T mesh here? CFD mesh, and I will make a slice again. Let's say here then we can visualize the topology of the mesh yeah, and you can see the boundary layer which was added to each part where it was defined including the the leakages and the and the wall of the of the spiral of the volute yeah so in by just adding these numbers you can create the boundary layers and the particular setup of boundary, boundary layers are in advanced meshing options in the layers parameters. So here are some default values, expansion ratio 1.2 and the final layer thickness is 0 0.25, which is a relative relative size compared to the to the cells, cell which was at the wall before adding, adding layers or this inflation layer. Okay, so back, back back to our setup which was here the last thing i have forgot to check is is that there are basically you need to assign the rotating reference frame so which part is rotating on two levels first level is to the whole component so here we have just one rotating component and then you you have to define the rotating let's say rotating frame to each part which is physically rotating so for example because in the volute part we have the outside part of the impeller which is also rotating so we need to set that this part is rotating otherwise there will be zero zero velocity on the wall and the simulation will be not correct so we need to set all rotating reference frames to all parts which are rotating so this this can be set this can be set the rot rotation within a non-rotating components can be set only to those patches which has this rotational let's say symmetry yeah otherwise you need to put it into the reference frame which is rotating yeah so so, so this rotating patch in the non-rotating component can be defined only for the rotational symmetry or the rot yeah for the patches which has a rotational symmetry <laughs> and i think it's shroud with leakage no it's volute part so here only those those parts are physically rotating rotating okay so whenever we have we have the mesh for cfd we can we can enable the TCFD module and quickly set a simulation for for CFD. So I've, it will be pretty quick. So 
in general, we, we set the simulation time, which is a pump, and it always the solution is then always focused on the particle application in the turbo machinery field. It uses particle uh, formulas for efficiencies or particle quantities are evaluated, which are interesting just for the given type of simulation. In the physics for the pumps, it's usually pretty pretty straightforward. Time management, we, we would like to do just the steady state sim simulation, but you, you can also do the transient. Here, usually for pumps, we have one speed line to be simulated. Speed line means is a it holds one revolution speed. So for one revolution speed, we can set several points to be simulated. Each points or each point holds different boundary condition. For pumps, usually a different flow rate. So we can simulate simulate a pump with, let's say, four different flow rates. Point iteration is the maximum number of iteration. Let's say the, the maximum number depends on the the complexity of the of the of the particular shape of the mesh refinement. More cells, more finer mesh needs more iteration to converge properly. And so, so let's set it to two. 2000 and then we can set uh, some nice convergence check criteria which can which can trigger the the convergence convergent check earlier than than the maximum iterations are reached for the simulation fluid properties we can keep it in the in the default if we simulating water if we simulating something different you can say a custom dynamic viscosity reference density or reference pressure. In case if you are simulating the water, you can enable the cavitation risk, which which let's say and enable some post processing, and it, and it will then one field which is I can call cavitation will show you all the cells which for which the pressure is below the saturated water pressure. So it will show you which cells will be possibly cavitating so we can let's say enable this turbulence standard approach is to use coi omega ssd but you can choose any other any other turbulence model you are familiar with and have have a good experience with it with it rotational reference frame so here you need to set a proper proper rpm speed i'm not sure now I don't know by heart what is the uh, what is the RPM for this for this machine. I think something like this. And you need to keep in mind that that the direction direction of the rotation uh, follows the so-called right right hand rule. So if your time thumb points the direction of the axis, so in our case is in the Z in the positive way. So your crossed fingers then show you direction, the positive direction. So it, in this case, we need to rotate in this way. So it's not the positive direction. Direction is the neg negative direction based on the right hand rule, let's say. So we need to set it, uh, this number as neg negative. Okay, in the simulation, in the solver, we can set as many numbers, of course, we. We, we need to set uh, numerical order first or second for water turbines. It always works with the second, but maybe sometimes when you setting up the simulation for the very beginning from from scratch, maybe I would suggest to go with the first order scheme and if everything works well, then run the simulation again with the second order scheme. Here, runtime evaluated quantities. An important section here, you set the averaging window. So as you can see, because the instant values for general application are for these complex geometries, is you are not sure that, that these instant values become steady. Yeah, there can be still some oscillation in the solution. So you can average them, or you should always average them by a given averaging window size. Maybe I have a nice example of it somewhere. So you always, it's always better to apply this averaging because then you are sure that the average value is constant 
and it doesn't matter where you stop the stop the simulation so always use this averaging window it depends again on the particle case but usually we use the values which is equal to let's say if you if you take the maximum number of if iteration and you divide it by by factor 10 let's say it's a proper number for averaging window but again it's you know it's not a rule of thumb so you need to always take this number based on your previous experiences with the case but for the first guess let's say if you take the maximum number of iteration divided by 10 or 5 then it's a proper size of the averaging window then efficiency probes this is defined for the for the evaluation purposes so where you would you where would you like to take the inlet and outlet pressures and other quantities and from which patches you would like to evaluate torques so usually we need to we need to include all the rotating patches but you cannot focus only on on a special part within within your within your domain you can Separately, we can evaluate the forces. For example, if you have some stutters there, you can evaluate forces which is acting on a particular part of the geometry. You can follow any probe, which is the point point probe, which puts a virtual point within within your domain at a given coordinate and will follow given quantities, which can then you plot or follow the convergence based on this based on this quantity in the in the particular point convergence check which is a new feature here so you can follow follow the any quantity you want like efficiency or efficiency averaged or any other quantities like velocity magnitude that inlet or outlet torque power and this will make the criterion for the convergence so if the if the deviation over the averaging window is less than your tolerance then it will trigger it will trigger stopping signal let's say to the simulation and will stop the simulation before the maximum iterations are reached so usually when you don't know what to set it's it's a proper way to set the efficiency average to follow and if the efficiency average is not changing over the over the averaging window size by less than 0 0.001 factor which is a relative a relative relatively to the actual efficiency average value then it will trigger it will trigger the simulation to stop the simulation control some advanced solver solver parameters which is not necessary to follow only maybe to check the minimum and maximum pressure and vessel velocities for the boundings so just if you set some let's say based on the application but if your expected kinematic pressure is higher or lower than these values then you should increase always these parameters so this must be some really safe safe thresholds between which your solution should be uh, should be placed yeah, some scripting. Anytime you any any anytime some of our customers has a special special requirement for something, we can implement it by scripting. And boundary condition, which is which is the most important part. So usually you can we can set flow rate at the inlet or at the outlet. So let's say volumetric flow rate. I think this case is something like this. So basically, it's a boundary condition or the volumetric flow rate which you would like to simulate to generate, for example, the performance curve at the at the given ranges and at the, at the given time step. So you you can you can add more points and any value values you you need at the outlet. Usually, fixed pressure the outlet with the zero because we are in the incompressible case so everything is so called in the kinematic pressure and it's relative relative it uses a relative pressure because the absolute value of the pressure doesn't change the solution because there are no compressibility effects and no change in density and so 
for the walls, the default is no slip wall, so wall with, wall with friction and standard wall function. Wall functions, if your mesh is really refined at the walls with the Y plus much lower than 30, ideally something below, something around one, you can switch for low Reynolds wall functions to so-called use the resolved wall function and resolve the, uh, the velocity at the wall. Interfaces, the treatment, the interfaces. So the default is AMI, so a simple interpolation between the interfaces, neighbors, or for some axial, axial machine where the axial symmetry can be <coughs> expected, you can switch for mixing planes approach. I think in CFX languages, this is a stage and this is a frozen rotor <coughs> method. Initial conditions, you need to set some, some reasonable initial guess. So you can usually keep, you can keep it as defined or to help the solver to, to start more smooth, more smooth. You can just set, let's say, what is the direction of the, of the inflow and, and the, on, at, and of the outflow, let's say. So some, some, some kind of this vector, it's, it's pretty okay. And the post-processing, here's some user user customization of the of the report. So which sections you need to see <clears throat> in the report, which is your favorite quantities. You can add some additional data with let's say with the, <clears throat> with the measurements or with with the previous results. In the turbo machinery, you can add some kind of blade-to-blade -blade views probes. You just choose which component should be blade to blade viewed. <laughs> so usually mesh is the rotating one. What what are the what is the hub, what is the shroud, and which field you would like to see in the in the report. And some other quantities like some samples. So you can sample any quantity or not any quantity pressure and, <clears throat> and temperature at a given wall. It will then save some raw format point and values, which can be then used for some external tools or for mapping to an external FAA tool or whatever. You can write everything, all the results and mesh in the CGNS format to be post-processed, not in the Paraview, but in TechPlot or any other any other tools, which you, which you are like to use, but we prefer Paraview. Write surface quantities, it it uses it writes the the forces pressure and so for the for the FEA analysis. If you enable FEA analysis, it will it will do it automatically. But without without it, you can explicitly tell. Okay, I would like to also save this export kind of data from from CFD analysis without applying FEA analysis. All right. So then. When this is finished, you can go for a CFD simulation. Okay, I will not do that because it will take a lot of, it will, okay, we have no time for that basically. And I would like to also show you the FA setup, which is much more simpler. So let's say if I go for the T mesh, I would like to create also the, also the FEA mesh. So if I would like to use the CFD and FSI, uh, together with NTCE, so I need to create both meshes. When you apply it, then we have a new section for FAA mesh. Here again, you can use some external net, netgen or abacus mesh format, or again the STLs, which is this case. So I will load a solid a STL of a solid, so one STL for the solid of the impeller. So I can load it quickly here. Then I can show you the results, which is which is no no not the result, the input, which is this. So it's one STL defining the solid of the wheel. And the meshing parameters are pretty very, very simple. It's just the maximum and minimum size of of the of the tetrahedra within the within the mesh. So the tool is net chance. So basically we can set something like let's say 
the largest cell will be largest dimension is two millimeters and the smallest one will be one millimeter and the other this is not relevant if you set explicitly you can also set some local local division of the of the of the edges in your in your input geometry but it's not, not so robust and you don't know what is the what is the longest and shortest side so it's better to set a particle sizing of each of of the tetrahedra and some optimization steps to optimize optimize the splitting in 2d and 3d to have to have nice and homogeneous mesh with the respect uh, for, for the perspective of let's say uh, let's say the sizing of each tetrahedra and neighbor neighboring tetrahedras. Okay, okay. So basically, this setup is okay, and then you can again go for go for the manager and run run the build the FEA mesh. And when this is when it is done, you can go for FA analysis setup. So in the simulation, in the FEA analysis, you can enable what you need. So we would like to do fluid structure interaction, definitely. We will take the FSI mapping. So we will take the forces from the TCFD results. Here you define which patches will be mapped. So basically all the parts of the of the impeller. So sure, this is basically all the impeller parts, not, not the inlet tube. So these patches will be used for mapping. You can also do if the centrical forces of the mass will be will be taken into the, into the account. So yes, I would like to rotate the solid with the with the rotating reference frame. I would like to map forces from pressure. Yeah, I would like to use the relative pressure, which is the let's say the most safe safest way because maybe maybe some parts has no no bumping part. So then it means if you use the absolute, it's like there is there is no pressure, so there is a vacuum, which is not good, yeah, which is not in the reality. So always use the relative pressure. And use average quantities for FSI mapping. Yes, because I don't want to use the last last iteration, the last results. I would like to use the averaged, let's say average forces over my averaging window from CFD simulation. Otherwise, I will be mapping only the last last trigger of, for example, if if the simulation finish here, then I will use the results at this point, not the averaged average pressure from which the forces are computed computed. So basically, always use this use average quantities for FSI mapping, which is a new feature. Then we can also perform a model analysis, and here you set just how many eigenfrequencies you want to see or you want to compute. So it depends again on the, let's say, on the shape and on 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 the load. So let's say I will would like to see 10 first eigenfrequencies because the first one cannot is usually not the one you would like to see. It's some some not important frequency, but you would like to see the main frequency fre frequency the first frequency which is important for you a solver again pretty pretty easily you can set as many number of processors you you have linear algebra algebra solver there is, there is direct and iterative so usually you go for direct and if direct doesn't converge then you can check the iterative one finite element order again first and second usually start with the first and if it converts well then you can go for the second. Nonlinear equations. If you expect that the deformation is pretty large, then you should go for nonlinear equations, which will enable some more complex, complex um, equation to be solved, which can, let's say, more ac more ac accurately uh, find the larger larger displacements. Material properties. I will keep this default one which is a standard steel but you can add any any you can add any parameters here boundary condition serve displacement so you need to define the place of the points which are fixed which doesn't move so you can do it pretty easily so i will for example define a cylinder in the 
axis origin and which which is intersecting let's say this this shaft part of the of the impeller so radius could be you no know, something like this two centimeters let's say one centimeter okay and i don't want to have all of this so let's let's say i can move it a little bit a little bit here and just to say okay just to see where the cylinder is cutting the impeller back to tfa okay it's too much so let's say 0 0.5 okay basically the, so all the cells which are intersecting this part of the impeller will be will be fixed for the fa analysis fixed quantities for example for temperature if you do also the, the heat transfer simulation you can set the constant temperature at some places of the input geometry which is not this case and the post processing you can set your favorite quantities so stress units megapascals is the default and displacement in in millimeters and when everything is done you can basically write the case and run all which will take okay i have some okay i have some miss uh, are not saving average quantities okay it, it is telling me that in tfea i have set use average quantities but in tcfd i haven't set this this feature so let me check it here where is it okay simulation runtime evaluate quantities yes here write average quantity so i i need to write all these quantities to be available for the fea analysis so save check setup and now case is set up so then you can click write the case and run run all button and now all these steps are running at once and at the end you will see all the results and the reports so when we jump in time let's say a bit so let me show you how it looks at the end of the simulation so i've simulated it before before the webinar so this is the this is the structure of the case at the end so in tcfd you will you will see the data structure including the results and for example the report so we can anytime open the report in html view and the same for fea analysis so there is also report in fea analysis so this is a standard report we always always show during our webinar so it includes all the basic all the basic data so we, here we have for example some head head parameters including so the the purple one is the is the results of the simulation i added also this orange one which is the results including three boundary boundary layers so you see there are not so big difference and this is the case without the leakage for example <clears throat> to be compared so the leakage takes for example four meters from the head for this design <clears throat> similarly for the efficiency and you can compare all the all other quantities here at the end you can see this blade to blade view if you set them so you can see nice first let's say topology of the flow in the impeller so you can see some recirculation areas which will lead you to some maybe optimization of your design or something like that and similar for similar for fa analysis you have the report for fa analysis so some basic information about the about the simulation runtime time of the simulation static analysis so maximum minimum displacement for misses stresses for example minimum maximum and here frequency analysis so yeah so this setup was set with 20 frequencies so it found 20 frequencies and the important one is usually those which is symmetrical so you need to open the results and see for the for the displacement for the given frequency and many many other information effective model mass and so so you can find all the information here 
and to see the result physically so let me open the open the case and okay so it loads all the data which were which were already simulated and then you can for example load so this is the yeah, default layout so let me open a new layout new render view and if you go for example for this <clears throat> fa analysis results so you can click show fea results apply and you can jump to any any results so this simulation was done for seven i think seven points right seven points i can check here back to here for, for example where is my efficiency one two three yeah, seven points and the best efficiency point is the say the fourth one <clears throat> so we can see uh is, okay i'm not sure where is my result it's my open case so many windows here la, 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 la. no no this is the running one oh is this one yes yeah, it's this one sorry so the fourth the fourth point is the best efficiency point so i can load the results for the for the best efficiency point and i can watch for for example for the stresses on the wheel so magnitude stresses for misses stresses i can see the frequency so displacement for the given frequencies so as you can see this one is not the symmetrical one so you can find the first which is symmetrical yeah this <clears throat> so this is the third frequency so then you can check the third frequency which is the relative one so this one is the the first let's say eigen mode which is <clears throat> interesting for us so this is the frequency of the first eigen mode important eigen mode with respect to this model analysis you can visualize also the displacement for the wheel for the given load so for the given point you can also visualize let's say if you use this var by vector you can nicely magnify by the displacement <clears throat> yeah how the so let's say maybe a little bit more how it how the empire is deformed yeah this is by a factor of 1000 and so you can play with the with, with the results and similarly similarly with the with the with the cfd cfd results okay so i think my time is really over so more than more than one hour of this example so i think it's time to go back to lubosch and time for your questions and yeah basically this is this was the let's say the quick quickest workflow so when you know your model and when the stls are ready so then you can work pretty effectively with the with the simulation setup and also what is good whenever <clears throat> you are satisfied with the setup and with the results then anytime you can customize the script then you can just for example export different geometry you can use the same script same configuration file and run the run the simulation on the ground just using a command line without any graphical user, user interface you can connect it to the optimizer or any optimization loop you are using and you can really use your hardware to the fullest because there are no limitations you can really generate generate let's say geometries and simulate them automatically Okay, Lubosch, are, are you still there? Still there? I'm yes, almost... of course, Radek. Thank you. I'm still here, and um, yeah, it it was uh, remarkable. Thank you very much. It was uh, it was perfect. Uh, I like it. Um, can you see my screen, by the way? Oh, well, let me go to the webinar part.
Yes, yes. Like, okay. I can see life example now. Yeah. Okay, so so Eric, thank you for your your part. It was uh, nice, and uh, let's let's go. Let's move a little bit because we are we are a little, little bit uh, longer than than we expected. So yeah. the, the Q and A session that that's uh, definitely uh, it's definitely time to answer a couple of questions. So let's let's take a take, let's pull uh, out of it some some of them, some some relevant ones, and let's we can answer them. Uh, in in the meantime, while while Radek was. Uh, yeah, presenting, I, I, I already uh, privately answered some, some questions, and uh, so let's pick let's pick uh, some important ones. So, Air is asking uh, whether we can we can you we can whether we can load um, external meshes, which which has been said uh, mm -hmm. one time. Yeah. I can I can just repeat that we can. Load external mesh, of course, in in open form format. Then we can uh, load an external mesh with with fluent uh, MSH format, and also we have uh, we can load uh, the mesh externally from in, in the in the CGNS format. So these three are supported, and the like like directly, immediately, right away, and uh, the the rest uh, can be can be somehow uh, yeah converted. It's always uh, done per individual individual basis if, if it's needed uh, yeah uh, the next question which which I found it interesting is if we can use uh, uh, s uh, solvers which are not a part of the CFD like like open form solvers so uh, yeah the the answer is that theoretically we can but it's it's definitely not uh, recommended because then it's not not guaranteed it's not well tested for them and etc etc but theoretically it's possible but it's not recommended uh, also the, the same for for the import of of, of uh, the, the the settings of other open form solvers yes it theoretically we can we can mimic the the, the settings uh, and the question is uh, yeah what uh, what it definitely needs to be tested, I would say. Uh, uh, then there was a question uh, on mixing plane. It's it's uh, again uh, uh, almost, almost all the time people ask about it. It's uh, yeah. So we have our own implementation of of mixing plane. It's it's perfect with axial uh, machines uh, on on radial machines. I think. It's, the the frozen rotor gives slightly better results uh, in the in the last couple of benchmarks we did the frozen rotor was a little bit better so so it's definitely it's great it's perfect for periodic segments in for excel machines that's that's for sure and it's been tested many times in the past and it's um it's it's work it works well mm -hmm. so it can be sure surely surely proven uh, again yeah so we have a lot of a lot of uh, like non-relevant questions and comments. Uh, people thank us for the for the presentation, and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Radek, can you see some question you would like to oh, to maybe? Pick? Yeah, yeah. I, I see one which can be directly answered. Uh, okay. What programming language is used for scripting? Is it Python? Yes, it is Python. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so <basically, very> well. <laughs> yeah, the, it includes some special function which can which can which can access the direction the dictionaries of the of the of the structure. But then it's classical Python, so you can do anything with the Python. You can take something, put somewhere, and do what what you need. Yeah, so it's. It's Python, and yeah. you just define when to trigger this Python script within within the simulation. So before meshing, after calculation, and so on. So it's very flexible. Yeah. Related to this question, I'll just add that uh, the pe people usually uh, used to use OpenFOAM uh, somehow, and and realized it's it's not so easy. And uh, this sort of questions is uh, is, is 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 used uh, many times. How we uh, use these settings that, that that somehow worked in the past in open form how, how do we how, how do we bring it here uh, for for this 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 scripting is, is very useful because you can you can basically do anything at any step uh, during during the workflow there are, there are like 
milestones or checkpoints where and there are many of them where, where you can run the script and and execute any command uh, you would like to add to the workflow so for this reason dc ae is is extremely flexible and as you can imagine you can you can replace all the settings and all the files which you would like to replace so if something so because as you know a lot of things is hard coded as in any commercial code but a lot of things can be added because we we know the source and you can you can you can use your own stuff like turbulence models and and, and many other models physical models and, and all the stuff so yeah that's that's why we are here to 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 support you in it in it and and do our best um Eric, uh, maybe maybe we should we should slowly slowly go 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 forward and 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 conclude what do you think yes yes yeah i think it's a good good time yeah. for it after one okay half hours. okay so this this will be really it uh, here you can see uh uh some, some some brands they they who who are already share our visions with us we we are definitely on the way we are, the, the project is developing uh, very quickly new and new customers are coming and that's it's glad, we are glad for it because we are one one family we are definitely not not a, a big brand we are we are we are a little company of eight people at the moment and uh, we have like family family kind of connection with with our clients and you can be sure that no one is ever left behind and we deal with all the all the objections and issues and troubles and as, as you know as they as they are coming because we are engineers and we are solving things which usually do not exist yet and it's associated with a reasonable amount of issues but it's our job and we like it and <laughs> <laughs> I think it's really, really time to to quit here. And uh, Radek, would you would you say something uh, at the end? I will be very quick. Thank you for watching. And if you have any question, do not hesitate to contact us. We are gladly help you discuss with you all the topics related to the CFD and not only to the CFD. So thank you for watching, and I hope we will stay in contact. Uh, thank you, Radek, and this will be also it from me. So we leave you with that. So thank you for coming. Thank you for watching. Uh, thank you for your attention, and stay tuned. And bye bye for now. Bye bye. Bye bye.